Today we're looking at the 2023 Under-14 Boys State Final. Oh, how about that? It's even better. Count of the day, count of the hour. That is sensational. Okay, state final. This is game three, so it's the decider for the under-14 boys, Maitland versus Wagga. Wagga in the green, Maitland in the red. Again, we've got the 3-2 scoring, which means if you score first, you get three points, and then every try after that is worth two to avoid a draw. Unless it's nil all, of course, but that is not the case in this game. So Maitland hit first, nice little flick ball, and a runaway. And he wins himself. On the ball. Let's have a look at that again. Okay, so subbing on the field. Uh, the ball carrier now. His job is... Well, it's my job to get the, the pen going. His job is to fade, which means to drag your middle off center towards the side to open up your open side. Fade down for his link on the middle. The Well, he doesn't actually get that. It, uh, <laughs> that's actually the link making the touch. Okay, but the, the play does still work as if that's the middle. So pretending that's the middle. Okay, the dummy half looking like he's going to run, which means the other middle will get nice and tight to shut that down. He actually shapes and passes out. Okay, this is actually the other mi the middle that's flying in now to make this touch. Okay, but either way, pretending that he's just made the touch all in the same. Okay, Maitland player is running out, but most importantly, the dummy half will follow his pass. Okay, and by doing that, all he has to do is beat this middle in a foot race into that hole. Okay, so the, the middle is rushing up at the dummy half, so all his momentum's forward, and by the time he realizes this, he has to basically do a hook candy cane turn in order to chase. So now the Maitland ball carrier just has to drift wide, get that middle away from them 21, and just at the last minute, maybe an unnecessarily an unnecessary flick, but hey, it looks cool. And it's three points on the board for Maitland. So it's a nice try. It's a rusher or an out ball, and the little inside pass, which means you follow your pass, we call that a chicken, as opposed to a rooster. Wogger now hit back. That's a nice try. The try itself is good, but it's just the, it's not the play that's really good. It's just the awareness from dummy half. So a little bit of panic set in here, and we get a what looks like it's going to be a punish play, which is link dumping the ball on a link. Okay, and normally he would split short side, and it's like a little quickie, and he's just going to weave in and try and score at the link's feet. But that, probably because that play wasn't in their playbook, the dummy half actually tries to run. Okay, but because the link has made the touch, this player is marking up the dummy half. So it's man on. Everyone else can push out and just be man on. So when he runs, he tries to go open side. And I think he realizes this. I think he realizes that everyone's manned up. I've got no one to pass it to. So what does he do? All right, I'm just going to beat this player. Okay, and it's just a nice step. It's a nice one-on-one -on -one step. Okay, the link has to crash in from Maitland, and it opens up for a try. Okay, so it's just a nice bit of footwork to beat the old man on play. Okay, so now it's one try each, but Maitland in front because they got the three-pointer. Middle, middle play here. <laughs> Runs over the top of him and finds the open player. Let's have a look at that again. Okay. So in an ideal world, the reason he's taken the ball this way is to drag. Because I do like obviously you want to you want that dump on the seven meter line. So he wants to drag the Wagga middle away from the center, drop it back in to his other middle, and then he gets the back middle. The middle that's not up. That doesn't happen. The reason that doesn't happen because he probably didn't wait until he got close enough to the Wagga middle for that to happen. Uh, because there's heaps of distance, this Wagga middle just shifts over to this way and makes the touch, which normally would confuse a, a player, especially an under-14s player, because 
in the box, he was probably programmed, I'm going to get the back middle and I'm going to step back this way. I'm going to step towards the camera. But because the other middle's made it, he now has to step the other way and send his dummy half into the offside player, which he does do. He does do that really well and he steps this way. Now the dummy half can take off at an offside player. If he steps this way, he takes off into this player. So it's very good sort of audible communication, whether that was done from the other Maitland players or it was done by the number six, but it's really good sort of an adjustment on the fly. So he takes off into the offside players. As you can see with his, with his arms like that, the referees obviously called the other middle offside as well. And he just takes advantage of that, the number two, and he runs into the end goal and it's just find a player and he finds him. So it's good middle, middle play. Nice um, awareness of which way to split from the dumper as well. So nice try. Wagga now hit back. It's a bit of a tit for tat game, this one. All right, a sweeper. Beautiful. Let's have a look at this. Okay, so first thing first here that I see wrong. Well, first thing I see right is this is an excellent, excellent sweeper shape. Number eight is actually running direct. Okay, and you always want to run direct on a sweeper because you're getting closer to that offside player and it means you can either go left or right. If you go at an angle, you're really only doing yourself up for one way. So he's running direct. He's running nice and tight, tight to that play the ball. And because of that, the Maitland middle here is backpedaling direct. He's parallel to the sidelines rather than doing his job, which is pulling his corner. If he was running at an angle on that sweep, naturally the Maitland player would pull corner and it would adjust their defense into their correct shape. But because the Wagga player is running direct, the Maitland player then backpedals parallel. And as soon as his other middle who's out here, probably a little bit too wide, as soon as he sees that, he's like, okay, we're competing. I'm going to go out to my man. And because he goes out too far, there it is there. Once you start backpedaling like that as a toucher, very, very difficult for then for you to, one, keep up with speed because you're running backwards, and two, step either way because you're running backwards. So you've really got to remember when you're making that touch that regardless of what happens, you need to, your body shape to be towards the short side or towards your link, which is the short side. Okay, but Wagga exploited that really nicely and, and it was just such a nice shape, nice setup, nice speed for that sweeper. So they deserved, they definitely deserved that try. Maitland again, I think they run that rip pass. Yep. Nice. I'm very excited. Player number 21. Okay. Let's have a look at this one. So they've run the same play again. However, this time... Okay, so we've got the touching middle, and then we've got the saving middle, which will cover the, the gap between the middles, if you like. Okay, so it looks like, yes, this guy might try and run in that space, so he's going to close it, this big middle here. But against the grain, because his momentum is running into the center of the field or towards the referee, he then turns the momentum around. You look at the Wagga player now, he's completely flat-footed, but the ball is already... That's probably seven, eight meters away from him and moving. So by the time he turns, he's way too far away. In a perfect world, I, you probably don't expect it from under 14s because they're still learning um, different types of defense. But that link should have just seen that and been like, I'm just going to run in and smash it. Because I know that my middle is cooked. I need to just take action, take initiative and just fly in there. But he doesn't, which again is fine. I, I wouldn't expect a 14s team that I coach to, to memorize that. Uh, but because he pushes out, number two just picks the right option, which is just go yourself and score. So again, a nice rusher or a rip pass or an out ball or whatever you want to call it. Yes, they award the try. They take a while to award the try. And a really cool handshake from Maitland. Wagga again, all the tries seem to be up the one end. I think all the tries have been up the one end, to be honest. I'm not really paying attention to this one. Too busy worrying about what in the tries were scored, but let's have a look. Okay, so it's a middle-middle play. Yeah, middle-middle. Um, he actually... 
gets both middles, which is good because now it doesn't matter which way you split. If you split this way, you run this hole. If you split this way, you run this hole. Both the players are offside anyway, so just get out of the way and let the dummy half beat them. They're offside. Very easy to beat the offside players. So the dummy half can pick up now. When he splits, he actually falls over. Offside players turning him inside out. They're still offside. They're still offside. And he can just run through them. Again, that's why you really don't, no matter where it is, you don't want two players in that touch. Ever. Okay, so if they ha if Maitland had one player... Let's just look at it again. Look at the shape. If Maitland have one player back here, okay, they can step forward and make the dummy half make a decision. And usually it's got to par be a pass, which then you can have your support from your other defenders on your team. But no, they were both offside. They're both caught sort of in no man's land and then everyone else is second-guessing themselves. Do I come in? Do I stay out? And it's really just hopefully hope for the best when that dummy half gets through. So again, a try on the right side. Maitland again. Haha. <laughs> so just to note, this is the player that threw those out balls before. Have a look at this. Um, I think that's the saving middle there. Not the not the guy with the orange boots, the one behind. Look at his shape. So he's already assuming. He's already assuming that that pass is going to go to number 25, who is running that outline as well. He's already ready for it. Um, so everyone's over-assuming now that the ball is going to go this way. And whether or not this was this player's decision or it was the coaching staff decision, whoever it was, it was an excellent choice. Because what does he do? He sort of half shapes the balls at his hip, but then he steps back this way. And again, we talk about no matter what, you need to remember your policy. This player should have just pulled corner. Regardless of what that out ball has to come, pull corner. Okay, it's it's first and foremost. Uh, but the ball carrier actually then run, runs around the link as well. Well, he tries to run around the link. The link then has to chase him. But because this player over here didn't really pull his corner, it opened up this gap here for the person who actually played the ball to score the try. And another nice celebration from the 21. But yeah, a really cool change up from Maitland there. That, was, that, that definitely had all the Wagga players fooled. Another try here, Rooster, or ML, sorry. And nice soft hands. ML, ML, ML. Okay, ML is middle, middle. Okay, middle, middle, play the ball. But it's ML as in M for middle, L for link. Because link is the predominant ball player here. The idea is the link will run direct at the toucher. The dummy half will pop to this player and run around him like a rat, like a rooster. That's why it got me confused. And the ball player will split outside the other middle and then line up for a hole. First thing I see, wrong. Bad defensive shape, okay, from the Maitland player. He's turned in. Need to be turned out. And he's putting too much pressure on the touch. This is the type of touch you want to do on the first and the second. You want to really try and slow their momentum down. But when they're when they're attacking your seven like this, you don't want to be lending your whole weight into the touch because it means it's harder for you to get back on side. Okay, so you need to get out of that touch as quickly as you can, not get into the touch so hard. So it's a really light, extend your arm, get yourself in a good body shape so you can pull your corner. He does sort of turn around and he's running the right way. He is pulling corner, okay, but his body shape is sort of turned in. So if he steps off his left, very vulnerable for that defender. But let's have a look. He goes in. The saving defender comes forward, which I don't have a problem with. The problem is if he comes forward, the link needed to be up here as well, okay? Because if he, if he steps off the line, he can actually take that intercept. But because he's so deep, that means the winger's so deep as well because the winger doesn't want to come up without him. And they can then go one pass, two pass, and a third pass just from that link being too deep on that line. Okay, so remember, if we're onside, we always need to move forward. Not too fast, but we need to be moving forward at a re like to, putting, to put pressure on, force a pass, and to be in a good position to, to make the touch and not allow those extra extra passes. 
So Maitland have gone back to their outball play. This time it's the number 20 throwing. Excellent dump. He's right on that seven. Okay, and he's got one, two middles offside. This guy's in good shape. He's pulling corner. Okay, but this guy actually has to come in. Okay, to be in good position to stop anything going between the middles, which he knows that's his job. Uh, but Maitland see this. They pick up and they go against momentum once again. Okay, you can see that by the time he's seen this and turned around, the ball's 10 meters away from him. There's no way he can actually catch this. But, but this time, the link has made a decision and he's going to be nice and tight. Okay, but again, we talk about moving forward off the line. Look how close he is to the line. His back foot is nearly on the line. If he moves forward off the line, as soon as that play the ball happens and gets up in the way, he makes that touch and Maitland don't get that extra pass off. Okay, but it's, again, he's staying lateral on the line and he, it's just a, a recipe of a disaster. There's just not really a lot of confidence in that defense. And it's a nice hole at the end. So again, they're really dominating off that one play, Maitland. And they've put themselves back in front. I think every try has been up this end, to be honest. This is a rooster. And he's awarded it. Okay. Okay, so body shape again from the toucher is turned in, but a rooster, uh, middle link play the ball with a middle running nice and direct and the link will wrap around and run a hole. The fader will just fade out. So that's a rooster, very basic play. You can YouTube, there's a lot of videos on rooster and it's probably one of the big go-to plays that you learn as a young player that you still use in the most elite form of touch football. So. Everyone knows it. Everyone uses it. There's the little wrap around. And I think this is what's using the thumbnail. Very close. So he just, when he runs in, bit of just probably a lack of communication with the Maitland players. But again, look how, look how close he is to the line. He needs to be there. Okay, and it will actually needs to be there. Because if he's up forward and in a bit tighter, he can't throw the pass because he can, what's called double touch, he can touch both of them. Okay, but he's far enough off the line that if he dives, he doesn't reach the line. Whereas because he's so close to the line, he actually doesn't actually make the attempt. But he's so close to the line, if he had have tried to make the touch then, the ball would have hit the line first anyway. So that's what we call, again, we're gonna move off that line when we're defending. Regardless of where you are, especially on the open side, Move off the line. There is definitely a reason to move off the line on the short side. Um, yeah, that's just one to get in your head. But this is this is sort of one of the last plays in the game. So Wagga are down by one point, but that's because they Maitland scored first. So it's actually five tries apiece, and there's 30 seconds left. And I feel a bit bad for Wagga on what comes after this, but we'll have a look at slow motion. So it's a Okay, we've got one in the touch. Good. Body position, good. Shaping his short side. If he pulls corner, even better. Quickie shape. Okay, he's ducked his head. We're looking at the guy playing the ball. He's ducked his head. Good. So he can't get forced backwards in the touch. And he's going to roll forward. So he's going to start his momentum going forward before he even gets the ball. There's the movement forward. Okay, so there's no time wasted here. Okay, they're already going forward, Wagga. That's a really nice quickie. Very, It seems very basic, but that roll forward makes it from a good quickie to a great quickie. And what's the Maitland guy done? He's turned his back, he's turned his head, he's looked at the line, which you can't do. You've got to get used to where that line is and how far it takes, how many steps it takes you to get there. Because he's moved, he's turned his back. Now the number seven from Wagga has stepped around him. But this player here from Maitland has just gone all out and dove in and make the touch. And the link came in as well. So what happened here, I remember watching this live and I straight away said, penalty Wagga, because the number six for Maitland was offside. The other two might have made the touch, okay? But because number six was offside, it made it very hard for him to dive at him. Um, so I was like, they're gonna give a penalty to Wagga here. But they just take 
a long time, and considering there's only 30 seconds left, I did feel bad for Wagga here, because the, the referees just did take a little bit of time to make the call. They finally get the call here, and the last play they do is just manned up on the quickie. And that's how the game ends. One second left, a forward pass. There's a touch. Pass off the ground. And Maitland win the under-14 boys state final. So, as you can see, they're pretty stoked. But um, an excellent game. Five tries apiece. All the tries up one end. I didn't realize that until doing the analysis. But, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, we hope that you enjoyed this one. And we'll tune in for the next game analysis on touchscreen. Thank you.